Hello. Welcome to the Belief Buffet, the weekly live broadcast, part of the Hug Nation network. And each week I share a lesson, a download, something that is kind of been, I've been learning from or struggling with or going through or inspired by that week. And I was going to share some of my struggles this week with my thoughts. I had a little bit of a funk over the weekend, got a little caught up in the things that were not going right for me. The worries about things that are really uncertain futures that hadn't even happened yet. I was worried about some financial things, worried about some living situation things, worried about choices that I made in the past about career stuff and just like unnecessary. And as I was looking back over the weekend, I was having some perspective and recognizing the futility of those thoughts, the wasted energy of that suffering. And so I thought, well, maybe that is a topic to share today. And then right before going live, I saw that many people were posting, many of my friends were posting their goodbyes and rest in peace to our friend, John Sir. And so I'm a little out of sorts, a little uncertain about what is the message of the week. thinking of John, thinking of the times that I spent with him, thinking of the people that knew him much better, thinking of the ways he impacted people, thinking of the ways that he was eager to lift people up and teach how when we did have interactions, it was usually him wanting to learn how to be better at things that I had more experience in, asking me how to do certain things with webcams or broadcasting and as his desire to be more of service. I reached out to him a couple weeks ago. He had mentioned something about being able to have visitors and uh, I was going to be going to LA, and so I said, "Hey, you know, where are you in LA, right?" Um, and I'm, I was, I was wrong about where he was, and so I did not make the visit. So I'm dealing with some personal guilt about that decision to not make some extra effort. And I'm thinking generally about loss and death, and this kind of reality that death and loss becomes more consistently a part of the human experience the older you get. You know, and as a kid, losing a friend was rare and tragic. Now losing a friend is just tragic. And as we age, it becomes even less tragic. My father is 80 and news of a passing friend for him is even more normal. And as we are connected with so many people through communities and the internet, and we have the ability to stay in touch and this amazing ability to, to, to be touched by and retain the energy and the hearts of so many people. It's this great gift and it's also this kind of new burden, this burden of having so much puts you in a situation to lose so much. And I think that's what I witness in 
people posting about losing John, that this person that you know meant so much, played such a beautiful role in, in people's lives and growth and laughter and their experiences of growing into their human being best. Uh, it's hard. So I am even more in tune with a perspective recalibration from my, my suffering thoughts from the weekend. You know, before I had heard the news of John, I was thinking about what are the practices of recalibrating your thoughts? You know, gratitude is the one that is the most effective and the one that I practice the most, that I go to the most. And even when I'm practicing gratitude circles twice a day, it's still not impossible, pretty darn easy to fall into that place of focusing on your loss and what's not right, what's missing. Which isn't to say that's a wrong thought. It just means to check it in and go, okay, is there other thoughts that I am neglecting because of this? And I think this is a different situation with grief and with losing a friend. But even in you know, this place of, of loss, I do find gratitude to be a really helpful practice. You know, I, I, I go instantly to the, the, the times that I was able to spend with John. I go instantly to the number of people who have been touched by him who will continue to spread his ripples into the world because of his impact on them. But it is a, a big wake-up call, as we need occasionally, the preciousness of it all. You know, I, I spent a day this weekend kind of checked out, took a long nap, watched a bunch of Netflix, just kind of couldn't face the world. And a day like that feels like no big deal until you start to remember that you got a finite number of days. You got a finite number of days for you, you got a finite number of days to spend with others. So I think I'm grateful for the painful reminder to engage more in life, to contact people more, to be less afraid of awkwardness, to be more aware of a day filled with connection is not one that I will look back on and feel like was not well spent or squandered. The loss is part of it. I remember a powerful experience I had at the Burning Man Temple many years ago. Um, the first few years of the temple, while I, I found it to be very, very powerful and emotional, it also is so painful to experience the grief and the loss of, of, of all these people. And at one point I, I had this awareness, this epiphany, that the grief expressed through what people wrote on the temple, if you're not familiar, people will leave messages or write things or leave tributes to, to people they've lost. And I just, I could see that each of these incredibly painful moments of despair that people were going through as they expressed this grief and this pain 
was directly represented uh, or, or rep directly related to the love, to the joy, to the, the, the loving impact of this person on their lives. And while that doesn't wipe away the pain, it does frame it in a way that has this intense beauty to it. And while in the moments of grief, in the moments of, of deep loss, this, these words probably feel pretty insensitive and un, not helpful. But the more I live and the more loss and death is a part of life, the more I where I am that it is the integration of the highs and the lows, the, the willing to acknowledge the crap and the cone that makes the cone taste so sweet. It can be the contrast that makes the human experience such a gift. So in these moments of grief and loss, you gotta let it let it feel. Let it be exactly what it is, not label it as bad. Just experience. And I don't mean that, we don't gotta do anything. I take that back. One thing we can do, if we so choose. So rest in peace, John. I know this last chapter has been a massive struggle. One that inspired many people with your strength and courage. And know that wherever you are now, you remain with us as well. <laughs>